All right. Well, thank you for that. And that brings us to our main billing for this evening. Uh, we have Gareth Benson waiting in the wings for us tonight. He is a commercial and intellectual property lawyer. He's been doing that for over 20 years, would you believe? He does look very young, but I've been assured that he's been going that long. Uh, and so he's got a real passion helping entrepreneurs and businesses protect and grow their ideas. Great thing about Gareth is that he's not only a lawyer, but he's an entrepreneurial lawyer as well too. So he loves business. He is online and he's got an intense interest in this online and business sphere as well too. So he's worked a lot with patents, trademarks, copyrights, contracts. If you're not sure what the difference is between all of those there, stick around. He's going to unravel all that so you know exactly what they are and how they can uh, help you in business. Um, and uh, he's really at the forefront of using AI and augmented reality as well. What's the difference between AI and augmented reality, I hear you say? Well, he's probably going to tell us what the difference is there as well, too. One, you stick on some goggles. The other one is there in front of you on a screen there. And he's recently been nominated for a Chief Minister's Export Award for Innovation. So who, who'd have thought, eh? A lawyer that's also innovative as well. That is Gareth. So uh, we're in for a triple treat tonight. So he's got a unique perspective, uh, which hopefully tonight will empower you to think about your IP, what your intellectual property is, how to protect it, and how to make sure you're not using other people's IP inadvertently as well too. He is the author of Ideology 2.0, which I've read, well worth a, a read as well. In fact, he's, he's written a number of books as well. I think the most re recent one has been published in this year. Well, not, not too far ago, not, not too... Uh, too many days ago as well, too. So let's put your hands together. Welcome to the stage, Gareth Benson. Thank you so much, Nick. And I hope you can all hear me there with the, the storms you're weathering over on the East Coast. I'm located up in Darwin, but I am a Melbourne, well, Melbourne born and bred, uh, beginning my career in 2002, believe it or not, Nick. I, I'll take a, a compliment in my youthful appearance. Perhaps it's the ideas that we generate together as entrepreneurs. It's a subject that I'm very passionate about. In fact, it encapsulates why I even became an intellectual property lawyer. Um, and so I prepared a presentation today because I believe that we as entrepreneurs stand on the precipice of great change. And with great change also, exists great opportunity and i see the reset you know that has occurred or is occurring through the advent of ai as a great opportunity for entrepreneurs to follow their purpose and follow their ideas through to create new value in what is going to very fast and rapidly become a new economy so with that i'd like to just switch over to the slides and I'd love just as we get started here for everyone to perhaps just introduce themselves and what business or industry they are in. It allows me to contextualize some of the content here and also apply it to you because I have served in organizations such as CSIRO through to SBS television and working with entrepreneurs. What I love about is that they cross the border of everything from professional services to creative industries through to digital and otherwise. And so I'd love to just have an introduction. If you'd like to just put in the chat box who you are um, and what industry you work in, the name of your business, perhaps. So just while that's coming in, I am going to share my screen and away we go. Hopefully you can see that. Is that possible? Can you see? No. Evelyn, okay, so we have, thank you, Aldwin. I know you're in media, uh, medical care, uh, Anita says medical career coaching, uh, education, business management, great. AI coach and trainer, Rosie, interesting. It'll be great to have a conversation with you. Uh, and media marketing, yes, smash and go. Okay, great. And we know Leanne Clune from Live Legacy Now, which is in coaching, wonderful. All right, so I'm just sharing my screen now and away we go. Is that working, Nick, from your end? Not yet, it's not, no. Uh, share the screen. Let me try this one more thing so I get the slides up. It's coming up on the... Definitely... Or... Let's try this.
think you've got that Go back in there. There we go. Yep. You got that now. Okay, I'll just go into presenter mode and away we go. Excellent. So, welcome. Have we got that? Is that working, Nick? Yep, perfect. Okay, beautiful. So, welcome to intellectual property in this age of AI. Um, today, I'm going to introduce you to what intellectual property is and then it's important in at this precipice of change and uh, why I believe it's also an opportunity to create, to innovate, and I also to protect the output of your efforts uh, within with using these tools such as AI. So today we're going to introduce intellectual property contracts and the, the important role of these things in the age of AI. How do we actually protect our ideas in this age of generative AI? How can we as entrepreneurs uh, use the digital tools available to us, but also own the import? But in order for us to do that, we need to take a journey together into what is actually intellectual property. Does anyone want to put in the box who what they believe intellectual property to be? I'm probably giving away a few things there, but uh, on the screen here, however, essentially it's about ideas. Now, everyone on this business, whether it is, it's the property of our mind. Thank you, Aldun. Yes, indeed, it is the property of our mind. In fact, it has existed as a body of law for over four, uh, 400 years, as we have recognized it as actually a legal asset. But what has, has in, increasingly confused me in the, in, this, in the 20 years I've been practicing is that people still have a, only very rudimentary understanding of what intellectual property is. And in a digital age, indeed, in an AI revolution, it becomes even more important to actually protect and understand what AI, our intellectual property is because we have now in the palms of our hand one of the most powerful machines that we've ever been allowed to utilize. And it is a one that is online, it is digital. So to understand intellectual property means that you are actually understanding the products of what you can be created with your own mind. So I'm gonna give you an overview, a small, small tour, if you will, of what those fundamental IP rights are. Many of you will understand and have heard of copyright, but also beyond that, we're gonna talk about the registrable rights. and with, we have an agency in Australia called IP Australia, which actually is responsible for registering our intellectual property rights. And it actually is a, I'm going to introduce you some tools that they actually offer for you to even begin your, or begin your own curious exploration of what of the intellectual property that resides within your business and therefore within your mind. Okay, so, and then we're going to do a short introduction on how do I protect IP in the age of AI and how you can actually utilize the tools that Nick so generously always introduces to us. How you can use these tools, but then to actually create valuable intellectual property of, out of that. And one of the key proponents is being, being sure that you are assigning rights and owning the rights that you use these machines for. Really crucial in this age of AI that we own the output of which it creates because then it becomes valuable intellectual property for us. So having said that, and I'm going to begin our overview here on intellectual property. And this begins with a short story. Those who know me well know that store I find that there is gold within our stories and there is gold within our ideas. And indeed the age of ideas actually began several hundred years ago. It was known as the age of enlightenment. It was time of great hope in, uh, in Europe, actually, in the 1600s. And during this time, it was a time when the printing press, a small invention was created, which changed the course of ideas and how they were shared across the world. This printing press was, uh, for the first time in human history, we were able to share our ideas more widely by actually printing them, by writing them down. Up until this point in time, only the most, only, only the most rich or exclusive people who had the, the ability to have an education, it was a privilege to have an education, and only those from the upper echelon of society had that opportunity to even use the printing press. But it was very, very important because it began sharing ideas, books were shared across the world. And within those books, 
ideas spread. And this heralded an age of enlightenment. It was a time of poets and writers and historians, and it actually also encouraged the first time in human history where intellectual property where ideas could actually be protected. And this began with a statute named the Statute of Anne. This is what forged copyright into our existence and actually gave the first time writers a ability to earn a pecuniary right from the words or the, or the things that they created, which basically gave them a legal right to own their ideas. Many of you may have heard, you know, the old saying of write your story. Uh, you know, writers used to write their stories down and then mail them to the writer's guild. The writer's guilds would represent the authors and that's how you could prove what was called provenance, a priority date and say that you were the author of this work. Fast forward now 400 years later and digital has changed everything. Without a shadow of a doubt in the 27 years in which our, our, the internet has spread ideas, have we accelerated our ideas, our spread of ideas. And indeed, intellectual property is now shared beyond, between us more common and often as we think. I mean, who has shared a post on social media today, for example? Well, you have shared copyright. And the rate of acceleration of our sharing ideas through social media, through digital challenge, has accelerated the sharing of ideas and thereby intellectual property. So it should serve us to understand what it is and how we can now furthermore harness it like the captain on a ship to actually use the sails, master the rigging and sail forth into the future by using it as a tool in which we can encourage and further extend our own ideas into this new world. So let's begin with that introduction of what intellectual property is. The World Intellectual Property Organization defines it as an area of law which enables people to earn recognition or financial benefit from what they invent or create. As Oldman correctly said, it is a product of the mind or intellect. And inter an IP Australia exists as a government body to help us all protect our ideas so we can grow our businesses and smash them online. So let's begin by understanding the four, some of the four fundamental rights within intellectual property. And that's going to begin with an introduction of copyright. Copyright is the oldest right, began with the Statute of Anne, you know, 400 years ago, and now is exists and is accelerated in the digital age. It is basically protects our identity. Copyright is exactly that. It is the right to copy. And you, under the Copyright Act 1968, are given the right to own that things that you create in automatic protection. It subsists automatically when you create it. You do not have to register that right. However, within that is also the complexity of like, what have I created? And now what does the machine create? But copyright exists in your business in many different ways. It is the identity or the business plans that you may create. It's in the websites that you will no doubt create for yourselves or have others, third party agents like Nick or others to build for you. It is in your website copy. It is in your social media posts. It's in the books that you author. It is in the ideas that you share. Copyright basically begins from its subsistence, is that when we write them down, in the days of the Age of Enlightenment, we used to write the ideas and send them into the guild. Now, if we have a record of them, as long as we are assigning them, you know, we are authoring them from, we can valuably bring them into existence. The problem is, is that we in a digital age live now in a sea of copyright. It's being created at an accelerated pro. And it's important more than ever to ensure that we own the output. And actually, uh, further to that, the way that we best protect copyright is actually through contracts. Your website is actually a really good example. Everyone on this call who operates a service or a product business should have terms and conditions on their website which inform how people can use their copyright. We use their ideas particularly relevant if you're in a, for example, a, a service-based 
business, for example, professional consulting. You bill by your time or for your service, but people need to be aware of how they can engage with your ideas and how you share your time, how you share your valuable advice. And actually your website should clearly delineate how people use your IP. It's one of those things in the digital age that can help you protect it. Basically, copyright is a bundle of economic rights which give the owner the exclusive right to own the intellectual property it creates. Copyright protection is automatic over the work. There is no need to register it. However, the symbol copyright can be used for notification purposes for you to assign the intellectual property to ensure that people are using it in the, you know, respecting your authorship. And so therefore, in a digital age, it becomes more important than ever. For example, in traditional copyright materials that exist include business plans, schematics, written concepts, books, marketing materials, database, customer lists. In this age of AI and a digital world, it now is source code, it's software, it's computer programs, it's our website, it's social media platforms, and it is the data in which we are always hearing a lot about the data and the information that now resists it subsists in our business, it actually is a valuable asset. It is known as copyright. So it serves us to actually empower ourselves in how to utilize these assets within our business, but most importantly, we protect them because at the end of the day and the start of it, business is still about building value and growth. And copyright is one of those fundamental rights that allows us to create that value. So I've got three tips for those who are the smashing online community. Um, and this is really important in an age of AI as well. We need, and we know that the laws are a bit, a little bit more, I'm gonna loop back on AI at the end, but AI still cannot own ideas. And AI is actually a tool that allows us to create new ideas, but we need to ensure we own, own it. So we need to own the output. Using the copyright symbol on our website, or also in our other in documents that we create with AI is really important. And furthermore, I'm encouraging you to actually use the copyright symbol actually in the name of your business. If you operate a proprietary limited business, you should use that symbol to basically tie it back to your business. For example, and it's for the earliest date. Some of you may have seen websites before where you say, you know, um, for example, Sierra or Microsoft is a good example. Microsoft, you look at their copyright notice, they actually protect it all the way back to the 1970s. Copyright in the name of your business, in your name, in the earliest day of cre creation, allows you to assert provenance. It's a basically like by the days of old by mailing the Writers Guild. If you can put it on your website, you can prove provenance. And it's actually because our, our, our in a click and mortar world, where our basically websites are the front door of our business, it serves us to actually put that notice front and center. And the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that that is free to do. Everyone on this call can do it. And it is actually establishes provenance in your ideas, those that you are sharing online or not. And while there may be some furfies out there, it's like, why should I even bother? You know, I've got this far without it. It only becomes a problem until you are challenged on the ownership of ideas. Moreover, it's a little bit like this. If you own a house, your property, and you leave the door wide open, you are inviting people to come in to your room, to your living room, to your bedroom, to your garage, and take the things within it. And depending when you live, that prize plasma screen might last, last all of three minutes or it might last all of three hours. The, prop, the reality is, is that we're very good about assertioning our ownership of property, physical property. When you buy property in this, through the settlement process, Leanne Clune, as a mortgage broker, will attest that it is very clear and unequivocal that when you buy a pro property, it passes from one person legally to the other. In an age of ideas, intellectual property, not using these tools, you are inviting people to walk in. You are inviting people to basically take your property. 
using the copyright symbol on your website or things that you produce, whether it be educational materials, software, or even in the professional services you deliver, means that you are saying stay off the grass. And that, my friends, is about protecting your property. And another way that we can protect our property is actually through the value of trademarks. Has anyone on the call tell me if they've ever used trademarks, if they've protected their name or their business name or even their domain name? How many people have protected their domain name? I'm hedging my bet most people on the call. How many people have protected their business name? Just an indication. Most people. How many people have protected their as a trademark? The point is, is that most people are under the illusion if they've protected the domain name, they actually have legal ownership of the name. The truth is, from an IP lawyer, you're hearing it, you, you do not have a legal right on that name. Even as a business name, you do not have a legal right on the name. Only a trademark will afford you protection, legal protection of that name in the marketplace. And it's a vital tool in the growth of your business. If you're able to sell your business, if you're going to grow your brand online, then trademarks are a powerful tool to do this. Who can tell me who this individual is? I'm just going to read the comments there. Right. Well, most people would be right in saying it's Elon Musk. No, of course, it is Mr. Richard Berenson, who for, for over 50 years has been building his valuable business with trademarks. In Australia alone, he owns 234 trademarks. 234 trademarks because he understands the value of the Virgin brand that he built on a houseboat back in the 60s. He's also grown that brand into almost every single of category of the 42 categories exists. Virgin Poker, Virgin X Comics, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Records, Virgin Megastore. And they are, he's very forthright in protecting uh, his intellectual property. In fact, I tell a short story in my book, Ideology, about how in the 2000s when I protect, was working for a helping defend the name Virgin Sumo, the name of a band that was some of my university friends who had recently graduated. And we went up against Virgin because they said, we are in Virgin megastores, the same age of music, cease and desist using the name Virgin Sumo. We took them on. We basically suggested that we would drop the Sumo for a $5,000 fee. They agreed. And my friends had the opportunity to record their first EP as the Sumos. The point is, is that trademarks have value. And once you have registered the trademark, you can actually protect it for 10 years in the marketplace. I think about a lot of the time and effort that people uh, use to create their brands, marketing, websites, etc. The cost to protect your trademark for the next 10 years and avoid people coming on to your and using your property, your intellectual property, is far outweighs the seven and a half months that it takes to go through the process to protect them. And if you'd like to understand more of the power of trademarks, you can ask Mr. Richard Branson. <laughs> but basically, trademarks under the Trademarks Act 1995 is a sign used in business to indicate the goods and services come from a particular Looks like uh, Gareth is just offline with one there. I think he's got two computers going at the moment. Sorry, can you hear me? Okay. Oh. There we go. Got you back again. Yep. Sorry, I should just say, just the trademarks. Um, basically, I said, uh, yes, it can protect your phrase, your word, your letter, your name, your signature. It's the flag on your boat which protects your business 
and it allows you to build value underneath your brand. Most people on the call will have a brand, a name, a logo. It protects that. It creates a legal asset for 10 years. We've got another half an hour. Is that right, Nick? I just want to be on time. Whatever's. Yep. Which one? That, okay. Yep, Great. That's right. So trademark. So let, let's offer, let me please allow me to offer some value for you today here. I'd love everyone on the call to actually walk with me as we conduct a trademark search, just to see that if your name is even capable of being protected as a trademark. Now, a few people on the on the call today actually offered their names. Actually, Nick, maybe you'd like to sing out one or two. Uh, you can hear, okay. I see video live streaming services. I think we saw some interest. Caterpillar Plus. That looks like a great one. Who's that's Will? Will, nice to see you here. You were here for the book launch of Ideology One. Well, I'm going to highlight your business today. Cater, cat, card Detail Plus. Sorry, Card Detail Plus. This is going to be an interesting one. Now, trademark under the Trademarks Act 1995, some some general rules of thumb that people should know when they're even creating their brand. First of all, if it's a geographic name, it's very difficult to protect. Champagne anyone? The infamous Champagne case actually ruled in Australia that any sparkling wine provider were not and are not per permissible to actually use their use the name Champagne because it's a geographic indicator and it belonged to the region of province of Champagne. Another, Ugg Boots Australia. Ugg Boots was so famous that they were not able to register the, their trademark. And because it was a name, Ugg Boots, that Ugg, that was seen to be in the common vernacular. So another, if you build a smash your business online so far that it becomes a Google, rest assured, if you have not protected the trademark, you may find that you may have not be able to protect it because it's a word that is in common vernacular. Business terms cannot be used and, and those that are general. Living legacy now, for example, is a very trademarkable term because it provides a unique badge of origin that can serve to distinguish itself in the marketplace compared to all others. Um, but to show you how you can use some of these tools for your own benefit, we're going to search for some trademark treasure. I've got here actually up a um, search bar. IP Australia has a free tool to use. It's actually for Australian trademark search. And if have you still have you still got this online? Have I gone into a new page, Nick? Yep, we can see you online, so you're good. Can you see the search bar? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, good. So I'm going to do a, a live search for you to show you how you can actually do your search for your trademark goal. Now, Will, your one that came up was Card Detail Plus. Now, this is going to be an interesting one, Will, because Card Detail Plus is actually those combination of words may be sufficient to consider it a brand of distinction under the trademark set and therefore trademarkable. However, on its own, card or detail wouldn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in and just see what comes up. First of all, there's 3,000 results in the Australian trademarks with the name card. Just so you give you an indication, this is what it looks. It looks like you've got everything from Hallmark, unsurprisingly, to... Hallmark, not unsurprisingly, being a big global brand, has many, many. Shoebox, interesting that Hallmark was able to even register that. Fleet Card, MasterCard, all of these are global brands, and you can bet your bottom dollar that those names have value to these business owners, so why shouldn't they have value to you? So, But in Card Detail Plus, do you want to just share a few words about your business, by the way, Will, so everyone can understand what it is you're doing? I do car detailing. Okay, fantastic. Exactly. So car detailing plus, fantastic. So the good news here, Will, is that car detail plus together doesn't come up with anything. And those combination of elements, car detail plus, would likely be open to being registered on the marketplace. But if you just use the various card or card detail, it wouldn't. The plus was a really important step to your brand because that will create under the Trademarks app 
a brand, a, you know, a badge of origin that is unique and distinctive to all others in the marketplace. And so long as it doesn't appear on the on the register here, you're able to protect it. Uh, and so therefore, uh, you've got an uh, asset that is worthy of your protection. Has anyone else got one? Uh, does that make sense, Will? Um, yeah, kind of. But I always go to the extra plus, you know, like I always go to the extra mile. Oh, that's a nice turn of phrase as well. I love it. My suggestion to you is actually, first of all, if you get card detail plus, you should actually think about registering the tagline with it, putting it together with your logo. Do you have a logo at this stage? Yeah, I just work locally and from people that call me and ring me up. Yeah, do you have a logo or a branding? Like yeah, I brand? do. I do have a logo. So what I would do is I put that together with your name and the tagline, going the extra mile, or you know, that which you just said, and you can put all of those things together as a trademark. That will protect the name, the logo, the tagline, and all of those elements, including even the colours that you use. You do you have distinct colours in your brand? Yes. It will protect all those elements together as one asset, a trademark. And once it's registered, you have it for 10 years. It prevents copycats. It prevents any competitors using your name. And most importantly, it creates an opportunity for you to grow with that brand and to do other things with it. But I'll mention that a little bit later. You, It's the sail on your boat, and it's a really important, the first part, place to begin when protecting your intellectual property. What's in a name, said William Shakespeare famously. Well, in the world and the digital world of now an AI-infused economy, a name can mean many things. And we, therefore, need to protect our property as if it was our own. So. That is trademarks. You can look up that tool at IP Australia. I might .gov.au. Maybe someone could even put that in the link in below. IPAustralia.gov.au. It's a link to our government agency. And actually, in that, you can actually find the tool, uh, which is called the Australian Trademark Search. And they've even released a new tool this year where you can do. I'm uh, actually clicking on it now. I hope you can see it. So if you had a new name for a brand, you actually can do that trademark check before you begin in business easily. So this allows you to do a quick search. <coughs> you read the you check on that and you choose. You can basically use this tool to then actually check. So what was the phrase you said, Will? <coughs> All right, I'll just use one that's here, Tim Tams. So I wanted to register a new, you know, creating a new product. Tim Tams, I can actually search that and then I can search the um, industry that I'll be operating in. So this would be like food or chocolates. Will, you'd be in car detailing. Leanne, you'll be in consulting or coaching, which is class 41. If Oldwin will be in class 35, there are actually 42 different classes of products and services and that you need to actually register in your name. As you can see here, Tim Tam's chocolates is class 30, alcoholic drinks, chocolate liqueurs. That's the kind of Tim Tam you wanted to create. The, this is, allows you to search your classes as well for trademark registration purposes. You've got to choose at least one. We'll say Tim Tam's, it's chocolate. It'll check your trademark for you, the possibility of protecting the name. And there's one similarity, which unsurprisingly is going to be Arnott's Tim Tam's. As you can see, to bring all of those things. That tool is free to use on the IP Australia website. Once you've actually done the searches, you're actually more empowered to then go about protecting it. It's actually the first step, in my opinion, that you should do before you even begin a business. Okay, so I'm going to move along. Have we still got me on the front screen there? My screens are back. Is that right, Nick? Yeah, we can see you back. Designs and intellectual property protection. Great. So the next stage that we're going to talk about, we talked about trademark. We talked about copyright so far. We now know the trademarks, trademarks being the flag on your ship. Uh, we now want to talk about what's underneath the hold. Um, and that includes, depending on your business, design. Does anyone, industrial design, manufacturing, 
building things, products, village, and we've got marketing. Okay, thank you for the search. Does it protect? We'll get onto patents soon. But basically, designs are for those who build products. You know, that could be anything from the Apple computers through to glasses, vases, pencil. Um, if you're in the manufacturing business, uh, you know, it could be furniture, it could be fashion designs. Designs are one of those areas that helps you protect the overall visual appearance of new and distinctive products. So Apple's distinctive, um, uh, you know, iPhones, for example, are well protected. Um, their interfaces are quite unique. And so the new, their new and distinctive products are all registered and protected. And designs, unlike trademarks, which are 10 years protection, you can protect a design with IP Australia, will protect you for five years and it can protect you in the ongoing life of your business. Um, I'll get on to patents now because patents are one of these areas that actually um, are also widely misunderstood, but a patent actually protects an invention. It's a new and inventive step. So basically a patent will protect you for the next twin, up to 25 years. Up until recently you could protect a patent for eight years, it was known as an innovation patent. But there are two kinds of patents that you can protect uh, in Australia at this stage, and they are an innovation patent for 12 months or a standard patent for 25 years. Um, basically, a patent is a legally enforceable right for a device, substance, method or process. Um, it requires working with an IP attorney such as myself to actually draft the patent. Um, it's a thorough process that actually defines the new inventive step of that patent. It can also e effectively bridge into the digital world. You can prevent, protect software. Canva, a US $55 billion company from Australia, is a software company, has 25 patents. It's over its unique interfaces and the way it has revolutionized its design. And it basically gives people like Canva and others, IBM, Apple, exclusive commercial rights and monopoly in the inventions in which they create. Now, a short story, one small inventor that you may have heard of called Thomas Edison was a big believer in the proponent of patents. He, no less, invented, uh, had a thousand patents in his name and his company, GE, still exists as a billion dollar company today. So there is a value in protecting your ideas. Inventions and the product of inventions can be protected with patents. Pharmaceutical, medical industries use patents, and I won't contest the value of pharmaceutical companies worldwide. Much of it is born and is protected in the value of their patents. So patents can still be available, of course, to entrepreneurs. One of the strategies I recommend if you are an inventor if you are creating a new product, is that if it is new and inventive, you can actually get an innovative innovation patent, which is only 12 months. It allows you to explore the prospect of you know, raising funds to basically seek investment. It also allows you to test your idea. And after that 12 months, you're able then to bring it out into uh, you know, a standard patent, roll it in to a, to a new patent to a standard patent. So that's again is administered by IP Australia and it's a way you can build if you're an inventor, if you're an engineer, if you are producing products that are new and inventive, it is a way to protect your valuable intellectual property. I'm just going to answer some of these questions before we move on into the exciting new world of artificial intelligence and what it can create for us all. Um, some of the questions here. Thank you, Nick, for doing that. Men's medicine, by the way, just on trademarks, the village market are very trademarkable. Men's medicine, that's going to be an interesting one to trademark. But moving on to some of these questions, what if someone plagi Mike asks, what if someone plagiarizes some information that uses the copyright symbol? Where do they stand? Well, that's an interesting question, isn't it? It's one reason to actually give yourself providence of your material by publishing it in a book or online because you can contest the provenance of someone else that uses it. If you can show a date stamp, you can show the copyright symbol, you're actually able, 
a lot of the contest around intellectual property goes down to priority dates or provenance. If you can prove, prove that you were the earlier owner, author, then you actually are empowered under the Copyright Act to take action. And I'm not suggesting taking everyone to court. What I'm suggesting is that you, uh, the notice to actually protect your intellectual property is called a cease and desist. And in my experience in drafting these on behalf of clients, when you put someone on notice and can prove your prominence, in nine out of 10 cases, they back down. So what often happens though, is people leave their front doors open online and otherwise. And then basically people take their ideas, they re-engineer them. They may even now put them through AI. And that causes a problem because at the end of the day, if you can't prove provenance, then someone else can. So the idea is to be forthright and to let people stay off your grass by using the free tool, such as the copyright symbol, to own the output of which you create and to actually assert your ownership over it. By the way, these systems, the IP Australia system, is reciprocated through international treaties administered by the World Intellectual Property Organization. Australia is a treaty in the area of, uh, is party to a treaty in the area of trademarks called the Madrid Protocol, in the area of patents called the Paris Convention, and in copyright, the Madrid Pro uh, Co Protocol. And these basically respect the reciprocal rights of intellectual property holders in the Commonwealth country, Commonwealth law countries, 117 different countries are part of the World Intellectual Property Organization, including Australia. If you have a trademark registered in Australia, you can take it internationally, you know, to the US, to Europe, to the EU IPO, to Singapore, and you can register your global brand but you have to, like all things, have it registered in your own backyard first, which is why I'm taking you through this today. And so therefore, um, if you've already trademarked the Men's Medicine logo, fantastic, well done, Mark. You've protected your brand for 10 years at least. And if you wanted to take it to the US, where you may be smashing business online, you can actually apply for a US trademark through the Madrid Protocol, okay? So at the end of the day, in the beginning of it, our intellectual property is protected when we put the ring fence around it and that begins in your own backyard. That's how you go global. That's how you protect your name, your brand, and also the ideas that lie under your boat. They are designs, they are copyright, they are potentially patents, and you need to have them on your boat before you go online. Because in an age of AI, things are going to move even more rapidly than ever before. Fantastic, Mark. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so let's just touch on AI. Now that we have a fundamental understanding of intellectual property and what it is, that how it resides in our business, we're going to actually understand how, how and why it's even more important in an age of AI. The reason being is that AI has challenged it's a new era and a new era of technology, and it's challenging our concept of what it even means to be human and come up with ideas itself. So let's just explore that very briefly towards the end, because I want to leave a little bit of time for questions as well, as it applies to your business. Basically, in an AI world, the evolving landscape technology is that, is that basically it's going to be more important than ever for you to assert your own ownership over the IP of which you create in your business. The tools that are available to you, but unless you assert the ownership of them, then they actually risk being owned by the machine. This is a piece of artwork. It is called A Recent Entrance to Paradise. It was done, actually created by an AI named and, and was actually produced by the AI itself, which Stephen Thaler was the one who operated the machine. He tried to register this work with the US Copyright Office. We don't have a copyright office here in Australia, but in America you do. You can register copyright and you include source code, but also in this example, it was the first attempt to actually register an artwork that AI had created. And the US courts actually rejected it. They said that AI cannot create artwork. Right? which was a big, bold statement for any of those who are in creative industries. Um, and they rejected the application. 
Um, basically, there are Stephen Thaler's recent entrance to paradise is the precedent, which actually says that human authorship is still required. Uh, basically, there are a number of lawsuits in the US which is challenging these notions at the moment. Um, but as a, and in this case, basically, the recent entrance to paradise challenge that whole notion that the rule is that human authorship is really required just means that we can use these tools but it's going to be more difficult we need to change and we need to use them and then we need to apply them in our businesses in order to still create valuable copyright now that has come up in another court case which i have actually advised in i advised this uh, this artist her name is chris castanova about 12, 18 months after Stephen Thaler's attempt in December 2022, I actually was connected to Azara through the creative community. Um, and I was asked by Chris whether she, what her position was with copyright because she was going to register her comic book, Zara of the Dawn, and she wanted to know where her rights in copyright existed. Uh, and I, including, you know, the likeness of Zarina, most people, some people mention Zarina. If anyone's seen The Great Showman, she is the actress who plays the trapeze artist. She used AI to create the likeness of Zarina, create a new character called Zara of the Dawn, used Mid Journey, which Nick's spoken to about on, on, on Smashing It Online as a tool. And she actually created an entire comic book called Zara of the Dawn and then went to register it. Now, the interesting thing that happened with the copyright in this instance is that the court actually originally said yes, which was a bit of a, a change from the Stephen Thaler decision, and then reversed its decision saying, no, the machine, the copyright, the mid-journey output cannot be owned, cannot be registered by, uh, cannot be registered as copyright. However, the name could be trademarked the copy in the script could be owned by Chris. So it's a currently a, 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 a position that is being tested in the courts. As I mentioned, there's six US court cases at the moment about this issue, and it's going to be very interesting to watch. But at this point in time, what's important is owning the output of the IP. So if you were Chris creating a copy book, copyright, actually the way you get around it by not registering is actually through contracts. Contracts protect the copyright. Much like you're using machines, you know, your IBM computer, which for most of your life or your Apple, whatever your preference is, you've been using these machines to create output, Excel databases, etc. What we're finding now is that we, all of that is great, whatever tools you're using in your business, but you've got to own the output and the contracts are the ways that you actually own it. I would deal with this in ideology 2.0. Essentially, your business is like a building. You are building value through the business by through a range of different intellectual properties. As we learned from Aldwin, it's a product of the mind of the intellect, but it's also a collection of rights, of legal rights. In could be trademarks, designs, patents, copyright. We need to ensure the value by by actually building our businesses on contracts. Contracts build value. They're as simple as the terms and conditions on your website as a sole operator or as a small business, but they are also the contracts that you make with your customers, your service agreements. And at the end of the day, in the beginning of it, it's about building your building up tall and strong. If you miss a point, if you don't register your trademark, if you think you own it because of the domain, but then realize that it's a common term like Ugg Boots Australia did, then you're actually missing a gap and you're actually building your business on weak foundations. So chain of title is really important in building business. It's actually going to you build a business from being just a small business to one that can have global impact. Okay, so I've mentioned that, the importance of contracts and chain of title. Ownership is really important. You need to own the output of all the AI we can create. If you use ChatGPT to create the logo or a mid-journey to use the logo, then only registering it as a trademark will give you the legal right to it. You need to assert ownership of it. If you write a book or assisted by writing the book, I'm not saying I wrote my books on ChatGPT at all. In fact, I'm the human author of them, but ChatGPT and my editor working in conjunction um, were able to actually execute a new version of my book in one week. That's the power of these tools. 
they can create valuable intellectual property. But if I didn't go through the process of editing, it, making sure that I was the author of it, publishing it in a book launch, gratefully assisted by Leanne Clune at the World Commerce and Contracting Organization, then I wouldn't be considered the author. And that's how you build value with AI. Okay, so I want to now peacefully resolve this. Basically, AI can be used in products. We can be doing designs. We can be using AI-generated illustrations to build, to make and publish comic books like Chris Castanova. Or we can deal with services. I've got a client up here in the Northern Territory who has surveyed the entire roads of the Northern Territory using an AI-assisted devices. But he needed to ensure that he owned the output of the US-based software company who he licensed the machine that he used to ensure he owned the output. Okay, so we need to be using AI in our, all of our businesses, but we need to crucially ensure that we're owning the output, particularly if we're using these tools for the greater growth of our businesses. At the end of the day, in the beginning of it, agreements prevent disagreements. Having your registrations prevent disagreements. And whether you were an author in back in the Age of Enlightenment, mailing into the Writers Guild, the same applies for you using AI today. AI is the most powerful printing press that's ever been granted our use. We need to use it widely and we need to own the output of the ideas we create. It's about placing a ring fence around your property, not leaving your, wide, your door wide open. It's about saying to people, I am proud of what I have produced and you should pay a valuable benefit for it. That begins by protecting it. And I believe protecting your most visible asset first, which is your brand. So in that, I'd just like to wrap up by saying thank you so much. I'd also like to offer anyone that was on the call, I will give that offer later when Nick Lonson makes his announcements. But I'd just like to open up now to questions and answers. By the way, this is what I was suggesting. I hope that is, image is coming out okay. But basically, I see intellectual property as this. It is all the ideas you've got to make sure it's on your boat. In an age of AI, it is the wind in your sails, but you need to learn to use the ropes. By ensuring that you have everything on your boat, with your trademark brand flying high, you can sail into new frontiers, doing deals and making making new ventures, new, new ideas, bring new ideas into reality. You as the captain of your ideas will be able to conduct yourself in a way that builds genuine value, respecting your ideas and sharing them with the world. Once that, you can do your map, you can build strategic alliances, you can sell your ideas, you can license your ideas, you can franchise your ideas, you can even seek investment for your ideas. But it all begins with you protecting your ideas. You can read more about it in Ideology 2.0, which launched at the World Commerce and Contracting Summit. It's all for design for entrepreneurs to guide them on how to use AI in, in an age of the digital revolution and how to create intellectual property out of your ideas. So any questions and answers, ask away, please. Well, we have a couple more minutes. Or we may only have one. We might even be there. Over yeah. to anyone. I've got a question. Hello. I yes. have a question. Hi. Yes, uh, yes. Hello. What is the difference between having the TN mark and a registered mark? Somebody who has quite a big coaching business in America, when I asked this question, he said, Look, just having TM and, and a copyright symbol is enough. So so that's one part of the question. And is there a timeline? If Can you go out into the market having not registered, but then register your trademark a bit later? Okay, so on that note, um, yeah, first of all, and that's the first question. Great question. TM is actually an indication of a pending trademark, and I see it being used in the US a lot like that. It's an indication that you are going to trademark at some stage or it's under under an application. The handy tip I have to share with you all is that everyone should use the TM because everyone should have an intention to trademark at some stage. Only an R symbol in the circle actually is a legal recognition of a registered trademark. That's the answer to that question. And that is uniform across the US, UK, Australia and any common law countries. Um, second part of your question was, please refresh me. <laughs> uh, is there a timeline? You know, can you oh, go out timeline. into the market? Yeah. Okay. 
What I believe every business owner should is just to have an IP strategy. As a captain, you wouldn't go sailing, you know, to Singapore without having well prepared your ship for the venture. And most people, unfortunately, are just bobbing up and down in the harbour. But having an IP strategy allows you to actually plan. Anyone that's been in business for less, more than three years will have a valuable client base. Therefore, their name has value and should think about trademarking their name because otherwise, you'll get, I get the calls when people, you get the competitors that take your name and they're actually leaving it open for your competitor to actually take that name before you. So yes, you should have a plan. Yes, it should begin with trademarks. Your domain is a license. It is not a registrate. It doesn't give you legal right. A business name is again, only a license of that business name for a particular period of time. Only a trademark will afford you full protection. Okay, I will move me through now on to others, well, Mike. We've, okay. we've got three three people with questions, hands okay. up at the moment. Okay. Got Aldrin, we'll Mike and Mike. Yep. Oh. Beautiful. Over to you guys. So who, Mike. who was first? Mike, was it Mike? Who was who it? Was yep. yeah. <clears throat> if I reveal something of my IP via AI, where does that put me? Uh, can you be a bit more specific to that? What do you mean by reveal? Yeah. Um, I have a, a business plan and, and financial planning system, which is unique to my business. It, it, it is my IP. Yeah. Um, it's uh, a system. Okay. One thing I'll say is that systems are t difficult to register as IP, but you can protect that system by way of contracts. If your clients are coming to use your system, you actually have to draft a contract, a service agreement that protects the business system in the service uh, you know, that you are providing. That's how you protect your IP. If you're using AI to create that system, even more important to have that in, in a contract because you need to ensure that you are owning the output of the AI and it is a product or service that you are licensing or selling, uh, you know, a subscription fee, for example, for. That's how you approach business systems. Okay, thank you very much. That's good. No problem. Mark. If I could unmute myself. Thanks, Gareth. Um, just, a, just a question further that, that you didn't mention. So. In the precious metal world, I've got a patent on Starium Precious Metal, the first new precious metal invented in over 100 years onto the market. Now, we're looking at doing the world PCT process. So the world PCT process is meant to cover it worldwide. However, there's several, seven or eight nations that have intentionally excluded themselves from it, one being mm -hmm. China, who will copy your DNA if you stand still for five minutes. So yeah, what's okay. the what's what's the point on doing that PCT process when those nations just won't play? Well, there's certain nations that have different, you know, respect for copyright and intellectual yeah. property. But that's mm -hmm. not a reason that you should go in unprotected. It's like driving a, you know, you do you, you drive a motorbike without a helmet. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I feel that that you need to build value with contracts mm -hmm. and relationships around your intellectual property and that that mm -hmm. strategically helps you create value. Um, yeah. I'm actually an advocate for the combination of registering IP and building valuable relationships mm -hmm. with contracts. For instance, mm -hmm. you would, because of your, you know, and, and using the sound business strategy as a captain mm -hmm. of your ideas, for example, yeah. Why would you put your have your your product made in China when you know that it's difficult for you to enforce? Oh, no, 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 no. We don't. And I'm not suggesting no. that, sir. No. But I am no, just no. saying strategy is key. Be, be, yeah. Because we sell precious metal to jewelers worldwide, so yeah. you can put any metal through what's called an RFX meter, and it yeah. will reverse engineer it. However, it would take it took us 15 years of R and D and hundreds of thousands of dollars to invent it. So it would take them another 15 to get the ratios right. Exactly. Then, then they would say, well, we've got a metal like Starium, but it's not Starium. Good luck with that. However, as you, as you know, China replicate absolutely everything. So yeah, yeah my, my question was because no one, no one gets even a conversation with me without signing a very onerous yeah, non-disclosure yeah. agreement. So they don't even get to speak about it. So that's another there layer of protection. But yeah, that's, that's right. It's a combination of those contracts, the NDAs, 
yeah. the relationship with your manufacturer and your yeah. patent. Your patent does have mm -hmm. value, of course. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got to be wary where you, you know, steer your ship. That goes the true for any captain. So you, you basically want to keep it in common law countries. The holding company, mm -hmm. as I often advise, should always be in a common law country, even if you're transacting mm -hmm. with countries that are, mm -hmm. you know, third world, you know, Indonesia, you know, I'm not suggesting anything. It's that how, that's how you do business. You keep your mm -hmm. valuable cargo safe in an Australian company, preferably, or depending on your affairs, so that it's easier to enforce in a jurisdiction like Australia than it is, for example, like the US. And mm -hmm. it's a process, you know, and I mm -hmm. think someone like you would get a lot of value out of ideology because you've been on the journey. And it's actually mm -hmm. about how you use IP strategically to mm -hmm. create value and growth. And it's a yeah, combination. We, we, we yeah. produce in NZ at the moment, but I'll be, I moved our business to Thailand in January 2024 because the Australian government are allergic to business. So we moved yeah. here and there, there's a lot of protection. There's a, a city of, of manufacturing over here like you wouldn't believe. So there's actually 440 yeah. manufacturing jewellers from all over the world in the one area that, that yeah. produce and, and, and pay tax 0%. So... Okay. We'll, be, we'll be producing out of there. Yeah, beautiful. Well, great. It looks like you're on well on the journey, Captain. And, uh, and just to qualify in terms of your question, it's about adopting the right strategy around com countries that yeah. do not value. But any of those 115 countries that are part of the World Intellectual Property Organization, the benefit of being a registering a patent is that you can enforce it and actually have it protected in any one of those 115 countries. So mm -hmm. that's some, something to bear in mind. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your great question. Next, Aldwin. And finally, to wrap this session off, Aldwin, uh, yes, if you have a question, please ask away. Thank you, Gareth. Really enjoyed that session. Um, my question is around, I have two trademarks that I did with a, a company nearly 10 years ago. And at the time, I paid five grand per, per trademark. Uh, so it was for Media Queen and Mass Media Mastery, my media program. And they're coming up for renewal and they've just sent me an invoice for about two and a half grand to renew it with, with them. Would you recommend I go through them or I just go direct? And it was, it was look, five grand a trademark I think is quite high. However, oh, yeah. you know, they, they were really pushing that. Oh, you've got to be very careful. How Who's this? Who was the agent? Were they an agent or they? Yeah, it was an agent in Southport. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I'd be sorry very to wary of that. Because Sorry to interrupt, Gareth, but I, I did mine through IP Australia myself. Aldwin. It's a, it's a rort. Don't, don't do it. Right. So basically, yeah, yes. on the renewals, you've got to be very, very wary because what global agencies can purport is that they are representing your trademark, mm -hmm. but in actual fact, they have just got your details. They see you're up for renewal and yeah. you can do it yourself. It's actually very straightforward. The renewal process yeah. is very straightforward. Uh, however... The registration process is a process. It takes seven and a half yeah. months. So on the renewals, yeah. I would say that it's important you can do that yourself. But if anyone is looking to get any advice, I'm actually offering the opportunity to actually do an IP assessment, including if anyone's looking at the trademarking process. It does serve you to actually go seek some advice at the beginning of the process. You can do renewals yourself. But it's much like putting an engine in your motorbike or your car. You want to make sure that it's installed correctly. So if anyone on the call would like some further information, you know, to actually even spend some time of opening up to Smashing Online, actually a 45-minute slots in my calendar. I've just put through the link to in the next uh, week or two to have a follow-up discussion on what is the IP in my business? Where does trademarks fit within my business? Where do designs fit? Where do patents fit? Or just to have a general chat about your terms and conditions that should be on your website. I'm open to having a conversation and over to you. Thank you so much for being part of this. And I wish you all the very best in sailing forth with your ideas in the new revitalized AI economy. Fabulous. Thank you, Gareth. Um, that's a uh, very interesting presentation. I can see that everyone's still here. So uh, everyone's pretty engaged in the whole thing as well too. If they do want to get in touch with you, I've, I've popped your uh, website into the into the chat there and um, is that where they book through to if anyone wants to book a conversation yes with? that's right i did have a uh message there did i manage to get that out i can't uh, i'm not sure uh, what do we do it came, yeah. to, me, it came to me directly because i messaged you earlier gary 
There right. we go. Maybe if you could just repost that, Rosie, because you can, yes, get in contact either through the website or I've just opened up a, um, a link there where you can set a time in the next two weeks. You can get in contact with me that way. I'm happy to spend time with business owners and guide them through the process of protecting their ideas. Fabulous. And there it is. Rosie's popped the uh, link into chat. Uh, well, so make sure everyone saves the chat before you uh, leave today. But uh, before we do, uh, first of all, round of applause for Gareth for uh, all of that uh, information provided and sort of uh, helping us to navigate through the whole world of intellectual property. Uh, and we do have a door prize for tonight as well, too. Do you want to tell us what the door prize is? Well, actually, yes, the door prize is actually a copy of my book, which I can my camera's not working, but I've got an of ideology. It's a, it is a copy, and along with it, I'm actually offering to work with business owners on an IP strategy. I'm really happy to talk with anyone about their IP in a 45-minute consult. But one of the most important parts is actually having a strategy, and that's uh, you know we we do that over after an assessment, and then for another two hours. So it's about three hours of my time, but it also it's definitely worth over um, you know $990 with the book so i am offering that for our lucky door prize winner today to spend some time with me in actually drafting an intellectual property strategy for their business fabulous excellent all right well let's bring up our wheel of names we've got everybody's name in the wheel of names so of course you need to be in the room to win so let's spin the wheel And there we go. It's away. So virtual drum roll, please. And our lucky winner for tonight is Mark Symes. Oh. Fabulous. Excellent. Congratulations, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. So you've got some experience oh, in, in that area, but I'm sure that uh, some of the discussion there will help, particularly with uh, you know, the things that you're doing as well. well so it might help your strategy, Mark. So looking Thank forward you. to that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. We'll connect you up uh, by email tomorrow, so uh, we'll introduce you and then you can uh, work out uh, a time or possibly even book into your calendar, Gareth. Uh, I've, yeah, I've already uh, booked a calendar appointment, Nick, while we were chatting. Oh, yeah. well, we're away. It'll probably be 8, 8 o'clock tomorrow, so away well, we can see you then. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. No, looking you forward to it, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> if you do want to pick up a copy of Gareth's book as well, I've dropped the link into chat. Uh, it's on Amazon there, so you can pick it up uh, through Amazon. Uh, now's probably a good time to save that chat uh, as well too. Uh, we'll drop the uh, other links in there if you want to watch the show again or point someone else in the direction of uh, tonight's session then that'll be on the Smashco YouTube channel uh, we've got the uh, link for that into chat as well too and again Facebook group if you're not a member of the Business Owners Farm Smashing an Online Facebook group uh, the link is in chat for you to uh, go and join that uh, as well too. Uh, to save the chat just remember it's those three little dots on the top right hand side of chat if you've got a recent version of Zoom if you've got an older version I think it's down the uh, the bottom so I'll we'll leave that open there for you to be able to save that chat and of course all those links to the call online tools are there as well so once again thank you Gareth for coming in tonight and sharing us or sharing with us your knowledge on IP patents trademarks and intellectual property uh, thanks everyone for showing up tonight hope you've enjoyed tonight's session and look forward to seeing you again next week have a good night